in the Union Army, and he detailed, left detailed journals um, about two springs that he had found, and because a lot of his, uh, because of a lot of his readings were published, it drew a lot of people to Las Vegas, and that's really kind of when Las Vegas started to really grow. Um, in 1864, uh, Nevada was admitted to the Union as the 36th state, and then in May of 1905, Las Vegas was actually founded as a city. And I know that picture's hard to see, but it's basically a four-strong carriage with a whole bunch of people on it. And at this time, they actually auctioned off, I'm trying to remember, like something like 116 acres of land, and they went for a dollar 25 per acre. Mm. So it's crazy the difference between then and now. Um, and actually, one, one more thing, in 1905, Las Vegas actually outlawed gambling. Gambling was completely illegal until 1931 when they legalized it. They said it had been going on for so many years behind the scenes, so they just went ahead and gamble it, and that would, or legalize it, and that was kind of the birth of the gambling Las Vegas that everybody knows. Um, in 1931, they also began the construction of the Hoover Dam. None of you guys have ever been there. It's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome sight to witness. Um, in 1935, they finally finished it, and it was over 176 feet high and 1,200 feet long. It was the tallest dam in the world. Now, this picture is kind of different. This is when they first started what it looked like in 1931. Two years later, this is where they are. And then, you know, as you can see, to 1935, this is what it looks like today. If you guys ever go to Las Vegas and get the chance to go, I recommend it. It makes you talk about making you feel small. It's a pretty awesome sight. Um, in the 1940s is about the time that the mob moved into Las Vegas. And all the, the organized crime and stuff uh, became really popular. Um, the mob actually ran Las Vegas for almost 50 years. Uh, 46 years, 1986 is the year that they kind of lost their handle on, on Vegas when one of the main guys was murdered and found in a cornfield like thousands of miles away. Uh, <coughs> Bubsy Siegel was actually one of the first uh, mob people in Las Vegas. He began the construction of the uh, Flamingo and was actually murdered in 1947 because he was very bad at managing money. And um, the hotel inflated from costing $1 million to build to $6 million to build. So he was murdered at his home very brutally by the other mob investors that, you know, were part of the deal. And they actually, I can't remember his name at the moment, but a, a new guy came in and actually turned it around completely and made it very profitable. Uh, in 1955, the atomic bomb testing in Las Vegas. People used to there used to be people from miles. It began 51 miles from the Las Vegas Strip is where they did all the testing sites. I mean, every picture I saw on this online from this era, I mean, it just shows so many people with cameras. I mean, they even had a little rule book on how to get a really good atomic bomb camera shot. So it was very interesting. Um, they continued testing there until 1963 when it was required by federal law that all atomic testing be moved underground. Uh, Moulin Rouge in 1955 was one of the first racially integrated hotels. Very pretty. Um, I wish that I could have lived in that era. I think it was very interesting. Um, all of the things that were going on in America, all the race and, and all of the political things that were going on was very interesting. Um, from 1960 to 2000, uh, the population of Las Vegas blew up. It went from just under 200,000 people to 1,600,000 people by 2000. Um, and that kind of brings you to where current day Las Vegas is. This is actually, this picture right here is the original picture of what is now the Mob Museum. It used to be the post office and courthouse for Las Vegas for a long, long time. Um, they redid, took them $55 million to restore it and then get all of the, the memorabilia and stuff in there and open it up. It opened in 2002. Um, Fremont Street, uh, one of the best things to go and see. They have the, the canopy overhead when they do light shows and stuff. Um, I prefer 
Fremont Street to the Strip any day. There's more to do, there's more vendors, there's a lot more stuff to see. I mean, there's people out there that do drawings and stuff for you, all kinds of stuff. It's very cool. If you guys ever go to Vegas, I definitely recommend going to the Fremont Street. This bottom picture is actually current day Las Vegas, what it looks like now. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things to go and do. You can go see shows. You can go see, uh, this up here is actually a spring preservation that Las Vegas has. It's a hundred and, I can't remember off the top of my head, 180 acres, I do believe, of preserve that's out west of Las Vegas. And they also have the State Museum as well. It's also on the same property. Um, circus delay shows, burlesque shows, all kinds of stuff you guys can do. Uh, basically, I hope a lot of this information has shown you guys that there's way more to do in Las Vegas than just gamble. I enjoy going every single time, and I hope even those of you that don't gamble can find it interesting and find plenty of stuff to do there. Thanks. Thanks for the Huh? Thanks for the Really? Did you like it? I did.